Thursday afternoon chat with your favorite artists with Jay Off. Hey, everybody. Please welcome the pride of Beulah, Texas, Micah Tyler. Yo, y'all. I'm here. <laughs> I, I, you, if you get out of Buna at any point, that's a big Buna. deal. Buna. I said Beulah. That, that's, we, we, listen, it's, the fact that, that we are being recognized in some form or fashion <laughs> is a real... I, I'm, I'm the ambassador of the town, so this is, this is going well. Okay. I, you know what would be a fun bet sometime? I talked to... We have a Josh Baldwin day on this show. Oh, come on. Uh, December 19th is Josh Baldwin day. Now, his hometown of Albemarle, Albemarle te- uh, uh, North, North Carolina. Carolina, does not recognize it yet. We in the southeast have started it, hoping it will spiral. So maybe we need a, a Buna, Texas day, Micah Tyler. Listen, the big the big day in Buna, Texas, the second Saturday in March. That's the Red Bud Festival. Okay? Red, the Red Bud. Bud. So it's okay. a little it's a little pink bush kind of tree. Yeah. Um. And you know, I we're an unincorporated township. We're not a city. Okay. So so, but the only time that we ever get some sort of a figurehead position, there's a Red Bud King and Queen every year. Oh. I, I'm still young. I still have plenty of time, but is there an age? I am building a resume right now. I, I've lived there my entire life, married a high school sweetheart. She was a school teacher there. So we're just, we're trying to get to the point where at some point, perhaps I could spend time on the throne of the Redbud King. Cause we, there's no actual like power to it, but right. you get to, you get to ride in the parade and stuff. Oh yeah. Fun. Now if you get King, but your wife doesn't get queen, do you still go? It's a package deal. Oh, okay. And, I mean, I, but, but yeah, but if they were, for some reason they decided to bust it up, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to pass up the King. <laughs> sorry, honey. She, sorry, babe. I, I, you listen, I, I'll, I'll leave you a seat at the table. <laughs> Look, I didn't vote. Like, the people voted. Yeah, it's true. The chamber of commerce <laughs> uh, just deemed me worthy. I pulled the sword out of the stone. We're here, but this is good. I will fly out for this, by the way. Okay. If it hap- I mean, you know. when it happens. You have to fly into Houston, drive two hours, but still. Oh, <laughs> there's no way for I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll it, do it. Now we're talking. Um, the EP came out earlier this year from Micah Tyler. Also, we've got a we've got a book to talk about. Yeah, Walking Free. That's it. Um, I just to set you up with just letting us know about this. I just I want to start with the first question, um, sort of about the book. Great. Um, first of all, I have two copies that got sent to me of walking free and yeah. I came up with this. Oh, I know Mike is coming in. So I'd love to give away the two copies of this book and have you just kind of doodle like, Oh, here arrow to this point or arrow to this. Oh, you're going to love this right yeah. here. Like personalized notes. Great idea. You. And then sign it and we'll give it away. And then I, um, this morning I left it on my counter. <laughs> That's good. But, yeah. but if it's, it's the thought that counts. Yeah. So if somebody gets one and there's no doodles in it, just know that there would be some in there if you would have remembered it. And it'll, it'll probably mean the same. These are special. I <laughs> thought about doing something cool with these. If it's the thought that counts, <laughs> then you're welcome. You That's should works, love this. Right? Uh, before we, um, I would just want to, before you tell us uh, about Walking Free and how this all came to be, um, I am just kind of curious about this because I had this, um, I, I don't read books. Yeah. Um, I know how to read, but it's barely. I get it. Yeah. Um, and so I started writing this. It was this idea that, uh, I don't want, want to give away the whole thing, but this is about your book, not mine. But I've started the process of just going, okay, I got this idea. I feel like it's from God yeah. and it's very deep and personal and it's to help me. But I'm thinking... When this, if this, when this is done, I have no clue where to go with this. Like, I'll finish it. Here's all the passion poured out, like you making an album. Right. And then it's done. It's like, am I going to end up at Kinko's <laughs> and stapling this thing? Making s- copies. Selling it out of the back of my truck. Here's yeah. my book. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> hey, I was an indie artist for six years. I've, I've sold a few records out of the back of a trunk in yeah. my day. So. Well, how did Walking Free come, come about? So what's funny is, so uh, we made the Walking Free music video and we featured some stories in there from a ministry called Ground 40 over in North Carolina. A guy named Wesley Kazai runs this ministry, um, was arrested 87 times on his 87th time, heard the gospel of Jesus, changed his life forever. Now he runs this ministry helping other men who are going through these things. So Wesley's become like a dear friend of mine and we kind of shared this song together and stuff well I, he was talking to me about a kid's book that he wanted to write and I, I was like that's really great he said do you want to write it together I said that sounds awesome so I went to my management company and I said hey there's this kid's book I have no idea where to start do we find a publisher how does this work they said we'll have some phone calls so they called and they found a publisher uh, and then they said we're gonna have these conversations in the meantime walking free the song goes out to radio and I remember seeing other artists post like seven day you version devotionals, right? Yeah. Like to kind of like give you a more connection to the song. And I was like, well, I would like to do something like that. That feels like a fun thing to do. Yeah. So I called the management company. And I said, hey, look, seven steps towards walking in the freedom of Jesus. What if we did like a you version thing and said, that's a really good idea. I said, each day is a step and a step means this. And you're like, go through some things like that's a really good idea. I said, great. I said, I don't know how to do it. Can you find that out? They said, sure. 
In the meantime, I'm going to, to Nashville to go start a tour uh, about a year ago. And the management company says, hey, we've got a publisher who's really interested in the book. Why don't you come in? We'll talk about it. I said, great. I show up believing that we're going to talk about a kid's book. And when I sat down, they gave me this little like pamphlet and it said, Walking Free Devotional. And I was like, this is not, what, what is this? They said, it's the Walking Free book. <laughs> I was like, well, that's not one that I thought we were going to write. Yeah. So, but they started talking to me about like, we love these steps, but maybe we could do 40 steps and really walk through it. And so it, it kind of just turned into me going like, I, I feel like that there's, there's, they said, can you do more than seven steps? I was like, well, there's a lot of steps towards yeah. walking the freedom of Jesus. So we wrote the book. I wrote with a guy named Robert Nolan, who's an incredible writer. We wrote it together. We collaborated on the whole thing. Um, it was finished, and here's my favorite part. We finished the whole thing out. It's over with, and they said, hey, to promote the book, we're probably going to pull like seven of these steps out and make them into a U version. I don't know if you ever heard a U version before, yeah. and I was like, I'm familiar, and they said, <laughs> we'll put it together. So basically, I got my seven-day U version Bible study, but all I had to do was just write a full book right. to get it. <laughs> It's so a, that's what it takes to make yeah. you a version. That's okay. it. Yeah. I just had to write a whole full blown book, but no, yeah. it was, it was, it was a process for me. But what I, what I found was really interesting was I apply two rules to, to songwriting for me. Mm -hmm. Any song that I write, any song you hear from me have, have made it through two rules. Rule number one, everything lines up with God's word. Mm -hmm. Everything I've ever sang into a microphone has been vetted with pastors, been vetted with me looking at scripture and making sure because if it's outside of God's word, it's not worth singing about. It's not worth giving to your family. It's right. not worth me passing this thing along. Um, and so that's rule number one. But rule number two is um, I really want these these, these songs to, to, to act like time capsules. Like I can't tell you what I had for breakfast the day that I wrote Never Been a Moment. I can't tell you what day of the week it was and I wrote different. Um, I can't tell you what shoes I was wearing the day that I wrote you know, Walking Free, the song. Um, but I can tell you what God was doing in my chest that day. Mm -hmm. And so I just really want to be present when we're writing. And so when we went to write the book, same two rules. Like we tried to make sure that every step of the way we're going like, okay, does it line up with scripture? And what has God taught me about what scripture is saying in these situations? And so it was a really neat opportunity for me to kind of apply those rules. And so, yeah, it's typically I get three and a half minutes to talk about a subject. This time I got 250 pages, which was really right. nice for me too. Yeah. So we got to stretch out a little more and then go from there. Now all my songs are like an hour and a half long. Right. So I've got to start, I got to, I got to figure out how to get back off of that now. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Let's go into one of the, the latest songs we're playing from uh, Micah Tyler. It's actually just been, sounding amazing on the air this year since we added it can you walk me up maybe dna of icy grace yeah so so i wrote that song um with a couple of buddies Ma matthew west was one of them yeah. uh, got him, i know i'm just trying to give a guy a chance you know <laughs> he's a guy who's like he doesn't have a whole lot going for him so yeah. i want to help i just want to help you know he's still rolling off rascal flats money <laughs> he's just he's doing okay <laughs> so me him and a guy named zach kell is a country writer we got together and started writing this song um and it was out of this realization that that for a long time um i would still hold a grudge against myself. I'd ask for forgiveness from Jesus for times that I missed up, misstepped and times where I asked for the grace of God. He, I, I knew that he would show me that grace, but somehow I still held those things against myself. I would still keep those things like in a backpack on my back, like going, yeah, but there's still shame attached to this. Like you are not actually forgiven. And somehow I held myself to a higher standard than, than the Lord did. Cause I knew he forgave me, but I see grace comes from me going like, man, but the longer that I walk, walk down this road with Jesus, the, the, the more I can look back and see things from his point of view. And so now I look back, I don't see the shame. I don't feel that pain or the sting. I see his forgiveness and I see his mercy and I see a grace that is greater than all my sin. And so this is just that anthem that no matter when I wake up in the morning, I, I, I'm not trying to f figure out where I'm going to fall that, that day or, or what, you know, if, if I mess up, then it's a failure of a day. I go, God, I just want to see your grace all over everything we're doing here. And so it's been a really fun anthem that people have really kind of thrown their, their feet into the shoes of and really like running this song. It's been, it's been really exciting to oh. go out there and share it. I love when we get to um, not just play the single that the audience has been hearing for a while, but to actually share um, a new song. Uh, the song is called Praise the Lord from Micah Tyler. Is there something we need to know about this this anthem? Yeah, you know what? Praise the Lord is a very generic phrase. Like, it's been used a ton. It's like hallelujah. It's amen. It's like these things that we hear all My the time. My dad used to put PTL, PTL. on when he'd I, say goodbye in a letter. I'm telling you. It, it, it's, but the thing is, there's something really, really profound about that statement because there is a Lord worth praising. Mm. I love the scripture that just says it, it, it has two promises connected to both sides of it. And the first promise is hard. The second promise is such a relief. First promise, in this world, there will be trouble. Mm. That's, a, that's a guarantee. It's, it's just as close of a promise as, you know, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart because I've overcome the world. So no matter what the enemy throws at us, no matter what is coming against us, 
We have a God that is worth praising in our storms. We have a God that is worth praising in our circumstance, in the valley, as well as the mountain. And so this song is just that thing of like, no matter how the enemy comes against us, no matter what comes our way, man, our job is not to go out and fight the battle. Our job is to stand back and praise him as he fights those battles on our behalf. We are not David coming down the hill. We are the scared Israelites on the top needing someone to go down and take out our giants. And luckily, we have a Savior that does it. So this song is just saying like, hey, my job is to stand back and praise you as you do the work here. Micah Tyler is my guest. Always great to see you. I know you're in Texas. We're Florida, so we don't get to cross paths, but yeah. it's always wonderful. I when feel we like do. we're cousins, though, right? Yeah, Texas yeah. Texas and Florida are kind of like, we're, yeah. we're close enough. We would be the first to create our own republic. That's right, yeah. <laughs> we legally can do it. Did you know that? You can. Any, Texas I don't know can pull can. out if we want to. Yeah. We, we're the republic, but we're, we're hanging in there for now. Yeah. We'll still probably I don't want to go too deep into yeah, this because we can get in trouble, but, <laughs> but I. I'm winking at you. <laughs> we'll sign a treaty. Yeah. This is, um, I thought of this last night. I was excited to ask you this. Um, the other day I pulled into my house, Micah, and I looked at it and a thought hit me. Um, there was about a five to 10 year period where I was putting in the 10,000 hours at mm -hmm. this craft, making no money, sleeping on couches, doing whatever I had to do to get better and better. This is in Seattle. And you're just, I had a, a group of friends that lived in Seattle that would let me crash because there's no way I could pay rent and go learn a craft radio yeah. and eat, you right. know? Sure. And then, um, you get through it and then 20, it takes all this effort to go climb and climb and climb. And then all of a sudden you're making a living doing the thing that you once were going, God, am I ever going to break through and have, and be on the radio, you know? And here I am 20 years later and I pulled up and I'm looking at my house going, I'm, so, I'm I've been so busy these past 20 years since I've made it sure. that I haven't stopped to go, wow, g this is incredible. Right. I get paid to do the thing that I was sleeping on couches to do. And I still remember a video you made, um, which was a very funny video, but it was like one of your first songs. It was like, hey, I'm I know I'm just another white guy with a guitar right. in, uh, you know, singing these Christian songs that I'm going to blend into the Jeremy Camps and Matthew West, which was very funny because you were right. There's yeah. just so many single names. How in the world are these people going to end up knowing me? But here you are, four, five, six songs deep and people starting to know who you are. It's kind of that moment of, oh, I've gone past the breakers and I'm into the other water. Do you get a chance to ever go? It's happening. Yeah, yeah. I mean, wh so, so I. That's I, a great question, JR. It's a, gr I it's a great. It's a great question, JR. I mean, like, for real, it is. <laughs> no, I, here's the deal. I, so, honestly, you're talking about sleeping on couches. Yeah. So, so I, I, I had a buddy that I slept on his couch the whole time I was making a different album because I couldn't afford to get a hotel. Mm -hmm. And he was so gracious. So, in the thank you notes of that record, I thanked him and I thanked a lot of the people, my parents, all that kind of stuff. But I also thanked his couch. I, I said, and thank you to your couch. Your cushions in my life will never be the same. Yeah. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in there. No, okay, so so here's what was fun for us. So when when God called us to do this full time, um, it wasn't because we had a record deal uh, getting offered to us. It wasn't because we had a tour bus picking us up. We had this calling to be faithful. And so I was a youth pastor at the time. We were My wife and I had been married for seven years. We had two little kiddos at the time. Um, a third one that we didn't know was going to be on the way about two years later. Um, and, and we just stepped into the unknown. We sold over half of what we owned, um, bought a single wide mobile home, put it on some borrowed lands for driving a sausage delivery truck. Like I was doing odd jobs, trying to make ends meet while also, you know, trying to be faithful to the calling that we have here. Um, so my wife and I, two weeks before the pandemic, we moved into the house that we built. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time we lived on the ground. Oh, okay? wow. Because we lived, we lived in an apartment when we got married, lived in a parsonage, like a pier and beam house when I was a youth pastor. Then we lived in this mobile home for nine years. Yeah. So tw 2020, March of 2020, we moved into this house that we built. It's our dream home, built next to my parents. For the next six months, you could catch my wife and I at any point just weeping in a room. Huh. Because we're because I, I feel like that sometimes the Lord is very purposeful in our wandering. Like in those times where you're sleeping on couches, in those times where I'm sleeping on couches and driving a truck, in those times where we're just trying to be faithful and we don't know what, what it actually is at the mm -hmm. time, but we know that there's there's something. God's carving things out in us yeah. so that whenever we receive it, we can have gratitude there. Like there's right. more room for gratefulness. There's more room for uh, us, this deep, deep appreciation. So I remember it just being so funny because we moved into our house and it felt like that we were all like ghosts because at any point, like we're all ninjas in our house. 
all of a sudden my wife would be like, hey, and I go, huh, because typically I could hear her going, gong, 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 yeah. through whatever, because <laughs> we're off the ground. Um, and so like, but like, there was just all these times where we're just going like, I'm just so grateful for this home right now. I signed a record deal at 33. Yeah. I was so much more grateful for a record deal at 33 than I would have been at 23. Right. And, and here's the deal. I'm not saying that there's some 23 year olds that get record deals that are, don't feel the same appreciation. But for me, God had to really carve some things out and prune some things in me so that whenever the time actually does come, yeah. it means more. I learned way more from closed doors than I ever did from an open door. Because yeah. a closed door, you go, okay, why is this happening? God, what, what does this mean? But God protects us in those ways to where when the door does open, Gosh, yeah. we're so grateful for it can when I, it happens. Can I throw in a point? Yeah, please. Because I think I think it's the surrender at the beginning mm. that was important to me, and you may. Uh, so for anybody else is like, wow, that sounds so easy. Well, I mean, is that the way it happens? You just, if you're a Christian, God will give you. At the very <laughs> beginning of my, I was the poor kid going into radio in Seattle, going up against all these rich kids that didn't have to work. So anytime the radio station wanted them, hey, can you fill in? Oh, yeah, I don't have a job. I'm out there busting it because I don't have money. I don't have a house. And but I committed my journey at the beginning, Proverbs three five, commit your way. There's something about a surrendered heart at the beginning that you when you see that favor coming, yeah. It's not just because God picked you, it's because there was a bowed heart at the beginning. Brother, I was I was on tour with Phil my first tour I ever went on, uh, on a bus was with Phil Wickham on his Children of God tour. Never been a moment I had just went to Christian radio. Um, I am I cannot afford to fly home. My wife and I are still like trying to make ends meet. So I'm out there on the road, uh, and so I had to ask Phil, can I sleep on the bus? Is that okay? Like, because we're on the West Coast. And I'm going, like, I can't afford to fly home, then fly back for the show. So, like, we're home for two, we're, we're off for two days. Would you mind if I slept on the bus? Is it totally fine? Um, I go to sleep on the bus on a Sunday night. Everyone gets off. They forget that I'm on there. So they turn the bus off. Okay. So I wake up sweating. But I also wake up to all these texts on my phone. It's Monday morning, and I got texts from the label, from my management company, from all these different people going, it, it, ha it happened. Never Been Mama is the number 20 song in the country. You've reached the top 20. Yeah. And everybody's going like, you made it, you did it. Well, then my wife calls. I'm going like, oh my gosh, how does she know <laughs> that the, the song's top 20? This is, I was, was wanting to tell her. I said, hello. And she goes, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm just sitting on the bus right now. And she goes, don't spend any money. I said, what are you talking about? She said, we have 87 cents. I said, where? She <laughs> said, anywhere, like to our name, right. in our account. And I just said, oh, Okay, yeah, yeah. No, are you okay? She goes, yes, I accidentally paid a bill early, but like, so we're, we're, we're not in the hole yet, but I've got groceries. We're okay here. I said, that's totally fine. So I had a $20 bill in my pocket from Merch. I walked half a mile down the road to a food line. I bought ham, cheese, bread, and a case of water, carried it back onto the bus, and I remember sitting there sweating on a bus, eating a ham and cheese sandwich, going... Number I made 20. it. <laughs> I did it. I made it here. See, but I, man, the Lord was just as faithful then as, as he is right now. And, and, yeah. and, and really... It wasn't because everything was easy that you that you love Jesus. We we praise God because He's just faithful no matter where we are in the journey. So if you're in a moment of waiting and longing right now, know that He's carving something out in you. So when the day actually does come, yeah. where you've got more, we got 88 cents. You're more grateful for that extra cent than you were whenever you didn't have it. Yeah, it's so funny. I know we got to let you get out of here, but I had that same ham and cheese sweating on a bus <laughs> moment while on the weekend going and doing weekends in seattle the number 15 market in the u.s yeah. they gave me a chance i was on really horrible only the drunks were listening from 12 to sure. 2 and then during the week a minimum wage ditch digging job it was me and a 99 percent mexican crew yeah. and so on our break i have this image of they would go sit under the tree for shape and I was under a different tree because I spoke English. Yeah. So I'm alone under this tree. They're all together under this tree talking and eating. And I just remember looking down at my hands, blood from digging ditches for four hours for minimum wage. And on the weekend, I was going and being this radio. But God was like you're saying, those were my moments of yeah. surrender of if this is going to be given to me, if the Lord builds the house, yeah. it's it's him. If the, it. the watchman labors and, you know, absolutely. And it was this, it was this great moment of just sitting there going, OK, this is not of me. Because but all we can do is be faithful to those moments. Yeah. though. We, I can't reserve my faithfulness. Well, God, if you'll just give me this, then I'll be faithful because yeah. maybe God's really testing your faithfulness right now and, and building something in you. So when those times when you're when the station does say, hey, we're going to put you on when everyone else is awake, yeah. then you're prepared because you've done the work in those moments. So yeah. no matter where you are in the process, if you're grinding those things out right now, know that God's building something. Everything's purposeful. Mm -hmm. And maybe when the time comes, I mean, your faithfulness will be grown in a way where maybe you can be faithful to a, a, another moment down right. the road.
saying goodbye to Micah Tyler. Don't forget Walking Free. The book came out uh, earlier this year, yeah. and uh, the EP came out in April from Micah Tyler. And yeah. I would you've encouraged me here to give thanks to you. Thanks that couch on your one of your albums yeah. that helped you make it. So I would like to say right here. Um, Ryan Wilson at Seattle Pacific University. Thank you for your couch. Jeff Bodie in Shoreline. Thank you for those four-year-old hot pockets in your freezer Come that nobody on. would touch but kept me alive. That's it. Sustenance. Always great to see you. You too, bud. Thanks. Right. The Thursday afternoon chat. Your favorite artists with Jay Off.